Joining us right now in our studios is Rahul Arora, CEO of Institutional Equities at Nirmal Bank Securities. Rahul, firstly, wish you a very happy Diwali and a prosperous New Year. And um, obviously looking back at last summer, th up until this summer, uh, we don't know how, how prosperous it has been. The index has done well, but it's been a polarized index and we all know that. Uh, do you feel that things will materially change as we step into the new summer? So uh, to start with, to wish you, your team and your viewers a very happy Diwali and good health and hopefully lots of wealth That's in the next one year. That's important. Good so, health. Uh, I'm going to sort of go out on a limb here and say that if we don't have any more Z's, the one housing's ILNFS's in the next one year and if we, uh, I think the biggest global theme is going to be the US elections. I think if there's no deterioration in the uh, US-China relationships and if we get that much talked about uh, personal income tax cut, uh, my sense is the Nifty could be somewhere between 13 and a half to 14,000 by next summer. So you're probably talking about a 15, 18 percent headline index gain from where we are currently today. So that's probably the the blue sky scenario. If nothing else was to go wrong, Cetris, Perivis, uh, because if some if globally things hold out, I don't think crude will misbehave too much. And I think uh, there's just uh, too much of wealth that has been lost. Uh, and as you, the right word you use was polarized market, which is just those 10, 15 stocks that have done well. I think the rest of the market picks up. We could probably be looking at a, a so very good So is that what you're giving more importance to? Global uncertainties? And uh, if there's a bigger play on the global front, then that's what we'll react to in a big way? So I think Devina, in a, in a slightly, uh, uh, you know, uncertain global environment, if you go back to the textbook definition of GDP, I don't think your exports and imports are in your control in a, in a very material way. So you're down to CING, which is consumption, investment, and government spending. With the corporate tax cuts, the government fiscal deficit on books is 3.9, off books it's probably, you know, at about 4.2, 4.3 and then you add the states. So I don't think there's too much by way of government spending that can happen and you're down to you're down to CNI and corporates will only invest when there is demand. So I think you have to revive demand uh, to, st to start off with. So I think that's where probably personal income taxes come in. Uh, so I think while global is going to be very important from a, from a macro standpoint, I think the big theme is going to be uh, to put money back in the hands of uh, people so that they go out there and start consuming. And I think that's probably a consensus that's building up and that's probably why one, some of the auto stocks have started to do really well over the last uh, month or so. Uh, obviously Tata Motors numbers are no reflection of, of that but I think um, my sense is I don't think going into election year you're going to see too much turbulence from the US side. I think what had to happen has happened and I think I'm far more optimistic in this Diwali than I have been over the last two or three Diwalis. Uh, it may be that the same themes play out, but maybe different stocks play out in, in those themes. So consumption may well be a theme, but it could end up being auto in consumption as opposed to staples or private sector banks or, or something like that. What about QSRs? Uh, you yourself have a pretty good knack out there. The uh, same stores, Gears notwithstanding, Westlife is doing well. Jubilant has done recently well in the last quarter. Is it a theme to bet on for the next 12 months? And what, what do you like here? Do you like Westlife? Do you like Jubilant? Do you like something else as so, a house? Uh, so, Neeraj, I think we're positive on both, but it all depends on your viewers' uh, time horizon. I think if you have a slightly <coughs> private equity-oriented bend where you have uh, sort of the stomach to hold on to a stock for about five years, uh, my sense is probably McDonald's will outperform uh, Domino's over a five-year period. Which is means Westlife would West outperform Life Jubilant over, Foods. Yeah. But uh, that being said, Neeraj, I think if you see the number of positive same-store sales growth quarters McDonald's has given you, it's quite phenomenal. I'm not scoffing at the Jubilant Food Works same-store sales growth numbers. It's coming on a very high base. And if you see the last three quarters, from the time Pratik Pota took over, they practically opened either no stores or maximum five stores per quarter. It is only in the last three quarters that you're seeing 20, 30, and now 40 stores open up. My only... Um, worry with jubilant food works while i'm you know i still don't think we've scratched the surface in front in in terms of demand is i don't want them to go overly aggressive on store openings as happened under the previous regime and that's probably where they lost it in terms of pricing product quality uh, and store openings and their return on capital employed and their margin suffered so i think uh, at 30, 40 stores, I don't think the skies are going to fall off. But if they're a little more judicious, uh, I think it's, it's a great stock to hold on to. Both of them are. Uh, but just the price points at which they are available and the scalability of the business, uh, because, you know, Jubilant is already a very large delivery business. I think for McDonald's, there's still a way to go over there. McCafe's have just started picking up. Beverages have a higher gross margin. So I think a lot of the good things that are played out for Jubilant are probably going to play out over the next two to three years for for McDonald's. So it's not that one is going to take away market share from the other. They're both in very different segments of the QSR segment. But I think uh, given where, given the way millennials think, 
I think it's it's a great it's a great space to be in. Well, they're going to be facing more competition with Amazon's foray now into food delivery. Best of greetings to you, Rahul. Uh, you mentioned about markets taking cues from the elections in U.S. IT as a pack has a major exposure to that market because most of the IT companies are export oriented. Um, how do you think that playing out then in the next summer? So uh, I don't think uh, anything that Trump does or does not do will have a major impact on the U.S. economy per se right now. I think uh, you know if you take if you take a look over the last ten years, Damneet, I think uh, when the last financial crisis crisis happened, India was growing at eight nine percent on on those calculations, and uh, you hit a U.S. Re recession. India is now growing at five percent, and you're probably going into hitting a U.S. slowdown. And I'm, I'm not saying recession, but <coughs> may, by all global economists and uh, literature that you read, the U.S. is probably going to grow anywhere between half to one one and a half percent next year. That's a, a, a remarkable slowdown from uh, where things have been. So I think in in that respect, I would not be too sanguine on uh, IT as a sector. Uh, I think barring TCS, the valuations are reasonable. Mm -hmm. Infosys, of course, is, is a slightly separate issue with what's happened over the last one week. But uh, given just seeing the BFSI results in the US and what the BFSI companies have been talking about in terms of spends, uh, my sense is you're probably looking at a very low single digit growth for IT going into next year. And I don't think rupee depreciation, even if it happens, is probably going to save them uh, to that extent. But that, like I said, it's it, it, the valuations look tempting because they're either 15x one year forward or, or less than that. But uh, I don't think there's too much option value to be played over there. Uh, so I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be too gung-ho about running in. If you must play a global sector, uh, which has, say, similar valuations, mm. and that has an option value, I'd probably be a buyer in, say, something like a pharmaceuticals. Uh, even though there is a lot of noise going around, uh, I think the option value of things start to go right is far more. And those stocks are available at very similar valuations to the likes of IT. So I'd probably still buy maybe a Redis or an Aurobindo or a Cipla or a Sun Pharma, as opposed to, say, maybe buying a TCS or an Infosys or an ACL Tech for that matter. Rahul, we'll leave it at that. Thanks so much for taking the time out. And to you and your team, a very happy Diwali and a uh, fabulous New Year.